Shalom. Today I want to talk about this Abraham Accord which was done recently. Actually this was the plan of Trump. It's called the Trump Peace Plan which he discussed on 28th January 2020. And he mentioned that it's a peace to prosperity. That's the heading he gave. But this week he made certain other announcements and this I have spoken on September 12th and 2020. It's in our YouTube. I mentioned about this that which is going to happen. So this Tuesday, what happened is he make a historical peace agreement between Israel and UAE and on the other side Israel and Bahrain. Although this is not the first peace agreement between the Arab states and Israel, because as you know, in 1979 there was a peace agreement with Egypt, and 1996 with Jordan, which continues to stay until now. And they've been the borders of Israel and they have peace and they have diplomatic relationships. On the September 15th this week, a historic day for Israel and to the Arab world because in the White House they make an agreement and they signed a peace treaty between Israel and UAE and Israel and Bahrain, brokered by US. The current peace agreement is very important because it occurs in the midst of a pandemic. Actually, people may be thinking why and how it can happen. Even people are scared to go out and do anything. But in the center of the pandemic, in the center of this corona, this is happening. So it shows that something beyond the expectation, beyond the control of human beings, this is happening just like a boom, just like, like a bomb. Boom. So we need to understand there's something beyond our control, beyond the thing is happening. Now, this peace treaty, is it what is written in Daniel 9, 27? Many people have a question of this. So we have to see about that. There are still more five countries or maybe another three countries minimum are going to follow. That's what Trump has been telling. There are some other countries which I have spoken on the YouTube on the September 12th. I mentioned about that. So you can go and see there. What does Daniel 9, 27 speak? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Now, many people may be thinking, what is all this? So we have to cross-check certain things and then we'll understand. So in Daniel 9, it speaks about the prophecy that was informed by Gabriel Angel to Daniel, which speaks about future things. Daniel and John in the New Testament have been revealed so many things and Daniel is one of them. And Daniel, it has been revealed about the 70 weeks. So in Daniel 9.24, it says 70 times 7 times that have been assigned to Daniel's nation, that is Israel, that in Jerusalem, in which things shall happen. And there's a purpose why God has to do it. So there are many wickedness, which they are God's people, but they're doing against. So they get, do you want to get rid of the wickedness? He want to put an end to all the sins and God also want to forgive and erase their mistakes and then want to bring in as a process of eternal justice. Now the thing is, we have to go to verse 25, then we'll know something more. Know and understand from the moment the word came out, which word, the word about Jerusalem or Israel, will be restored and rebuilt until the arrival of the anointed one, that is the king, that is Messiah. There is going to be seven into seven times that is 49 times and 62 times into seven so from the time the word came about jerusalem for restoration and to the coming of the lord jesus christ to this world that is 49 times plus the 62 into seven is 434 times a total of 483 times now the question is whether it's been fulfilled or not we have to go back again and we see in Ezra 7.13, when Atazarazas was the king of Persia, he gave orders to Ezra, the Jewish priest, the scribe to return to Jerusalem from Babylon to investigate and re-establish worship according to the custom of the Israeli, according to the Torah. And also he got the information about this in the book we can see in Nehemiah 2.8, where the Persian king Atazarazas says, allowed Nehemiah, the Jew, who was a cupbearer to him, to return to Jerusalem and build Jerusalem. So the prophecy of 70 into 7 
times have been fulfilled on the time of Jesus coming to this world. Then verse 26 says about 262 into 9, that period will be dismissed by someone who has been anointed, which means that is the anointed is Jesus. The other name of Je Jesus is Christ, which means the anointed to anoint. It says, but for himself. Well, it's, it explains Jesus indeed died, not for himself, not because he could not live or he cannot withstand, but because he died for salvation of the sinners, for us. So Jesus coming was prophesied in the book of Daniel and it has been fulfilled. After Jesus' death, we continue now with verse 26. Yeah, we saw 24, 25 now, verse 26. And the prince of the people who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. It is said that the king of the people who will come, meaning the king has not arrived yet. Right? So the king has not arrived yet. Because this is talking about the next part. This is about the end time where Jesus is going to come back. It is said that his people will destroy the city. It means Jerusalem and the holy place. It means the temple of God. So here it splits city, Jerusalem and holy place that's Jerusalem, the temple of God. The place of worship of the Jews. The question is whether after Jesus' death, there was an event that destroyed Jerusalem, the temple of God. Of course, we all know that. In AD 70, after the death of Jesus, the Roman army under the command of General Titus, who is a historic person, still his statue, his statue is there in Europe, you can see. The first temple built by King Solomon was destroyed during the conquest by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonian kingdom in 597 BC, 597 BC, during which the Jews were exiled to Babylon for 70 years exactly. And that's already mentioned in the book of Daniel. The temple of God that was destroyed was finally rebuilt by Ezra, the priest, and described during the time of the Persian king at Ephesus, and rebuilt the temple, which was called the second temple of God. Now the second temple of God was then destroyed in the year 70 by General Titus. The temple and the city of Jerusalem were destroyed. Since and since 135 AD, during the reign of Emperor Hadrian in Israel, there was a Bar Kokhba revolt. People revolt, and that's the name is Bar Kokhba. A rebellion against Roman rule. So many Jews were killed, persecuted, and even prohibited from living in the city of Jerusalem, which name which changed the name to Alia Capitolina. Even the name of Israel or Judea which at that time was called Roman's province of Judea, was changed to Syrian Palestina. So the name of Israel, the name of the place, was no more the same. So it's changed as Syrian Palestina. And that's how the name Palestine came for the place, which is because he changed the name. Okay. Since then, because of the immense pressure and persecution, the Israelites, the Israeli people, have been scattered throughout the world, which has been spoken already. Until today, it is 1950 years that the Temple of God has not been built yet. Even though on May 14, 1948, Israel returned to its homeland and David Ben Gurion, the leader of Israel, at the time declared the establishment of the State of Israel, which immediately received the recognition from the American President Harry Trump on the same day. But in order to fulfill the end time prophecies, there are two agenda to be carried out, namely the first one, the return of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Because it will no longer be Tel Aviv, because the Lord Jesus will come only to Jerusalem and not to Tel Aviv. The second thing is the rebuilding of the third temple, where later it will be occupied by the Antichrist, as mentioned in Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4, saying, even he, that is it, mentions about Antichrist, sits on God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So, this has to be done. This has to be prepared. Currently, these two agenda cannot be implemented because Jerusalem itself is currently divided into two. One is West Jerusalem, which is under Israel, and East Jerusalem, which is under Palestine. While well, the temple of God, which was once located in the old city of Jerusalem, in the city of Temple Mount, now there has stood the Dome of the Rock. Kuaba al Sakra and the Al Aqwaza Mosque. So the third temple cannot be built in the place. Then what does it all this have to do with the peace agreement? The connection is it there? 
the peace agreement and Israel and Palestine or Arab countries in which there is no guarantee. There's a guarantee that Jerusalem is recognized as the capital of Israel and the third temple can be built in the Temple Mount area. And the agreement is made for seven years. Then this will be very clear. Sign of the end times. An Antichrist will appear very soon and the time of tribulation will soon begin. That's the reason the peace agreement is very crucial in relation to the fulfillment of end time prophecies. However, there is a tendency that they may say that because of this time, peace with Palestine cannot be achieved. It was initially carried out with other Arab countries first. And then Trump has spoken that even Palestine will follow. That means there are negotiations going on. So in the YouTube, although I already mentioned the five nations which are online after UAE, and Bahrain now has joined, and there are three more I have mentioned over there. And in the speech of Trump, if you listen, he mentions even a day later, Palestine also will follow the peace. So Trump is working and his teams are working, and we need to pray for the Trump team, and we need to pray for Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, because he's not an ordinary person, he's been in the military, he's been a diplomat, he's been an opposition politician, he's been a foreign minister, he's uh, been a prime minister for more than one time. So, Netanyahu knows what he's talking because any soldier, they don't want to fight, even though they are designed to fight, but they want a peace. And he has been a soldier. And he's been a diplomat. A diplomat's job is to make peace, so he's been a diplomat. And he's an opposition politician also, and he's a minister, prime minister now. So, we need to pray for Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and also for Trump and all the team that the peace can come sooner so we can fly away. <laughs> so the thing is we have to understand we need to pray on the one side the believers on the other side this video please share it to people who are not believers and believers for them to pray and for the believers who don't understand these things. The second thing please share it to unbelievers who don't understand who don't know about all these things because as you know, I've spoken about this, that Jerusalem has to be made capital. That's one of the things. When President Trump became elected, even before the election, I wrote to him, I spoke about that. So we need to pray about this, that Jerusalem has to be made capital and there's a peace agreement with all the Arab nations, and especially with Palestine. Let God help you all. And especially those who are not saved, I want to tell something. The stories which is written in the Bible are not stories. These are all reality. What has been expressed, shown by Dad, by Angel Gabriel to Daniel, and which has been spoken in Revelation, all these things are happening one by one. We are closely moving close to the rapture. Jesus is going to come and pick us up. Get ready. And if you are not saved still, get saved. The Bible is true. What you are seeing is reality. May God bless you. Keep in touch and subscribe to the YouTube so that you can get subscribed to the Vijay Ministries YouTube and to the Instagram, and you can see in Instagram many videos also, and up-to-date news. May God bless you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.